Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about blue jeans. I'm going to talk about being a rebel in blue jeans. Painting denim specifically. Uh, so denim is an interesting thing to paint because it's a natural place where we can apply uh, some texture to our cloth. Denim is naturally has a larger uh, component part to it than something fine like cotton or wool. Um, you tend to see the stitching. Uh, it tends to be a rougher fabric. So all of these things are a good chance for us to apply some fabric. So we've got our, our cowgirl model here. And um, on these areas here, in between her sort of riding pants, uh, we're going to go for jeans. Now our end product is going to look something like this back here. I did kind of the area between her on the back side already. And so we're going we're gonna to bring it up here to the front. Uh, specifically, all this area here, here and then out here. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use this little leg here to test since this will stay in camera really easily. Uh, and our colors today, what we're going to use is we're going to stick with some scale color today. Uh, our two blues are going to be Holder Blue, which is a very, very dark navy blue. And then, what is this thing called? Hirill Blue? I don't know. It's a sky blue. Uh, again, my exact colors don't really matter, as per always. You want a deep navy blue and a very light blue. That's all that really matters. Um, the other two things is <clears throat> we're going to need uh, a gray and a flesh tone. I know that sounds weird. You don't normally think of your jeans as having flesh tone in them, but trust me when I say these are going to be two, two very useful colors. Um, we also need a white. Any white will do. Um, I've got some War Colors white on my palette, as always, because that is my go-to white. So, uh, we're going to start out by taking just a nice 50-50 mix. And I apologize, I don't have my palette in the shot because it's kind of messy right now. Um, and it would be very hard for you to actually even see the paints I'm utilizing. But what I've got is a 50-50 mix of the dark and light blue. The key with blue jeans is there's a lot of different colors they could be. Um, if you go to the store and you look at your jeans, you'll notice that... Uh, a little too much paint on there. Let me wick some of that off. You'll notice that there's a lot of different shades of blue to blue jeans, and that's okay. Um, so obviously we started here with a nice zenithal prime. So we've got some dark and light tones already. So what I'm doing is just taking a very thin, uh, a very thin mix of those two and putting that over the top of there. Now you can see, because we went very thin, it preserved uh, a lot of our value sketch of what was already there. Okay? So pretty easy so far. You can see we've got a nice little transition. We want some of that gray to show through from under our zenithal. That's actually very advantageous here. Oftentimes when we're working over zenithal, one of the tricky parts can be saturating the colors. Because if you're working in thin glazes, you've got to apply several of them. However, blue jeans are, are not actually very bright blue. So that is to say, if you compare them to something, take a, take a you know, set of your blue jeans out and put them next to something that's like a very true saturated blue. Okay. And what you'll see is that they look dull by comparison. That's because they're desaturated. They have a lot of grays and darks in them. And so that's what we're accomplishing here with our initial value sketch. And we want to make sure we preserve that. So we're going to start by building in a little more into our shadows. So I'm going to take some of my uh, just darkest Holder Blue. Um, I can mix it with a little black if I need to. At the moment, we're just going to reinforce a little bit in here. And what I'm going to do is just push some of this down into the deep shadows. And then again, just kind of void some of that off of the brush. Pull it down here where there'd be a darker shadow. What I want to do is just get some nice deep creases in there. Okay. Okay. Easy peasy. 
again, you can go with lots of different blues. Uh, I've seen people do denim and have, and you know, I've seen denim that looks very navy to very light. It's all fine. Um, the key is really more in the texturing and in the color choices. That is to say, the additional color choices. So now we're going to take that original mid-tone blue, and we're going to mix it with a little bit, with an equal amount of our... Uh, of our flesh tone and gray. So I'm literally just going to pull that over on my palette, take a dip of the, you know, a brush load of the gray, a brush load of the flesh, get it in there, and get a lighter color of it. So what I want is a nice mix of something that looks lighter. Now the flesh tone will naturally turn it somewhat green. The gray is going to help balance that back out. But the flesh tone will make it easier uh, to create our highlight sketch. Probably want to lean a little more gray than flesh. We just want a little bit of that flesh. So now we're going to do is we're going to come in and on these creases and on the highlights, we're just going to do some very light touches. Okay. Very light, and we're going to just build it up here slowly. Okay? Pulling it towards the highest spots. Now, with that same color, what I want to do is I want to create a little texture. So, instead of my base coat brush, I'm going to get a very sharp brush. Here I've got a double lot. And I'm going to go get even more of that gray along with a tiny touch of my white. Mix that in so I get something that's really desaturated light blue. So something like that. Okay. And then down here on the leg, what I'm going to do, wick off most of the extra paint, and then I'm just going to very lightly come in and make some quick scratches. Okay. Extremely light touch here. Okay. Hopefully that shows up. You can see those. Just very, very light scratches. Go back into my white, lighten it up even more. Again, wick off most of it. Okay. And then at the very top in the highlights, we're going to come in and we're just going to make some more little tiny hashes. We want a very light touch. We're just going to hit these highlights here, these edges, these creases where they're the most raised. Okay. All right, so now what we get is a very scratched effect like that. At the same time, I don't know if it's good, this is going to be visible, but there's a, a seam line here in her leg. It's probably not super visible on camera. But jean seams are visible. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to just dash out that seam line. So I'm not painting the whole thing. I'm just doing little, little stripes. Now... I'll go back into my mid-tone that I made with a little more gray, the slightly darker one, and then I'm going to cross-hatch in the opposite direction from this one. So I had horizontal stripes, now I'm going to do some vertical. Again, very light touch. Now at the moment, we have some very extreme transitions. That's good. That's what we want. Because now, what we're going to do is we're going to come back into that original blue color we had. And we're going to turn it into a true glaze. So nice and thin. We can test over what's on our hand here. And you can see that I have almost no coverage, which is what I want. 
So we wick off that excess. And then we just come in. And I'm going to do a nice little very careful coat over everything. I am not washing it. Okay? I'm not letting anything extra pool. I'm intentionally covering the highest points. Okay? And you can see how it brings that back into line. Now, <clears throat> We can go for multiple glazes. If we do, we want to let that dry. I'm actually going to switch up to a slightly bigger brush and not use my detail brush for this. It's going to go up to a size zero. We want to let this dry, okay? And because whenever we're doing multiple glaze layers, we want to make sure we're nice and completely dry. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Which I think we're at now. So what we're going to do here is we're going to reinforce a little bit more of what we did before. So I'm going to come in to just a few careful shadows here. And just reestablish some quick darker shadows. This is in a little bit of a gray a <clears throat> little bit of the darker blue, a little bit of the gr uh, gray, a little bit of uh, black. Just assume there's always black and white on my palette. I don't think I need to explain to you black and white colors. You probably got that part. Okay. So... <clears throat> Our goal now is basically we want to sort of smooth some of this out, okay? So what we want to do, we, we just want to leave little hints of that texture we had under there. So now with that lighter color, I come in and just hit some of my highlights again that I knocked out. Push some of them down there into the darker areas. Just do a little bit of light touches. I'm literally just almost sketching with the with the brush as opposed to painting. Like you see my brush strokes are just these light back and forths. Because in this case, I want the paint to be a little rough to create that texture. Now it's still very thin, very under control. I do not want thick paint. That isn't going to work well for anyone. So we still need to keep a tight rein on our paint. Go back to our mid-tone blue. And we can keep switching up like this. Basically, what we're going to do now is just sort of smooth out all of this again. And you might ask yourself, why do we keep establishing these highlights just to glaze them back down. The answer is because we want a lot of visual confusion in our texture. Lots of different colors of paint. Jeans are actually, because we can't really capture the texture, but your eyes still, like when your eyes take in jeans, they're subconsciously sort of aware of all the texture that's there, even though you're not reading it. And so something very flat we can't actually get, I can't get brush strokes as small as real jeans would have, right? It's just not possible. But that's okay, I don't need to. I just need to create the visual confusion that it does exist. So again, I'm going to come back in and just make a few little light colored hashes. Pick out some of my high points again here. Again, with just my highlight of my white gray or sorry, of my uh, my gray and flesh tone. And 
jeans also tend to get bright where they're stretched thin. So in this case, her knees aren't exposed, but if her knees were exposed, we'd want to make those real white, real rough. Jeans tend to get more worn in those areas where you get, you know, where they rub up against something frequently or anything like that, okay? Get a little bit more of our white into that. Just catch some very sharp edges here. The texture on this mini is pretty fantastic, so I've got a lot to work with. If it's more flat, then you want to do more hashes. Okay, so you can see now how we're getting lots of different tones baked in there, and that's what we want. And the reason I did multiple layers of the freehand is, again, because I don't want any single group of the tiny, slight hashes to win. I want to have hashes covering over hashes, covering over hashes, because that gives me the illusion of that density of texture. And again, I'm using these particular blues. There's lots of different blues you could use. So if you don't like the color of mine, if you feel yours should be darker, just move everything down a little bit in the spectrum and you'd be fine. You know, if you want like super dark navy jeans. Yeah, no problem. Just push the the navy element in here more. It's just fine. In the end, that's your piece. You do it how you want. That's why I don't generally like to prescribe hard colors because the reality is there's lots of different colors that will work for most of these projects. There's not like some magical color palette out there. So there you go. Basically now, if I want to, you can see there's her uh, her blue jeans in effect. I think that looks pretty good. I'll finish painting it up and get a picture of it. And you'll see how they look when they're all done on this side as well. Um, what I'll probably do from here is just continue. I'll probably do another slight la layer of hashes, little quick uh, hashes in the fabric. One more light glaze down here in this high point, And we'll call it a day because I want to kind of catch a light point right here on the fabric. In fact, I'll do that on camera very quickly so you can see it. Because I want to really bring up that this point is where the light is coming from right here. And hence the individual threads are getting caught. So just a slight change, doesn't do a whole lot, but it does a little something. Even if you don't notice it, your brain does. So there you go. That's painting blue jeans. It's basically a simple matter of adding some texture through quick hashes, you know, in a sort of tic-tac-toe pattern. If you know how to make a tic-tac-toe board, you can do this. Just nice, thin, flowing paint. Uh, remember, a dark blue and a sort of light blue, and then gray and flesh tone. In fact, if you want to really scale it down, like if you wanted to go all darker jeans, you would cut out the lighter blue completely and just mix up with these two into the darkest blue. So there you go. If you want lighter color jeans, introduce a lighter blue into it. You do your hashes, work your shadows in there. Don't be afraid to have a little bit of texture when you're laying this on, not by heavy paint, but by doing very thin repeated lines and then glazes to bring them into tone with the rest of the jeans. That's all there is to it. Very straightforward. So, hope you enjoyed this little denim painting tutorial. I'm going to go on and do the rest of her jeans now and get her get her ready to go. But uh, if you liked it, go ahead and give it a like. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Uh, share this with somebody if maybe they're working on a, uh, a project 
of uh you know somebody all in denim maybe they're painting the bad guy from or one of the bad guys from stranger things season two i don't know if i have enough blue paint to capture all that denim i'm not sure uh but uh give it a share that's always the nicest thing you can do but as always i appreciate you watching we'll see you next